submissions for the house um, and after uh, going through our criteria um, which the uh, criteria basically covers um, based on the date received the distance from Lincoln High School available parking square footage of the house design and um, oh, the, the, uh, the square footage of the house and also the um, roof line of the house. If there's multiple roof lines involved, the house is probably not going to make it easier. Uh, the committee came out of our meeting and we uh, uh, proposed Kurt and Kim Hoyer's house, pro house project for our building trade home for next year. And that will be a consented agenda item in our next part of the meeting. So then business services actually started at 6 p.m. and uh, there was no public comment. We have four consent agenda items out of our meeting. Did anybody want to have any of those held out? Hearing none, we will go into the first one, Canvas Learning Management System. Uh, this is a, a management system uh, for, since we're going to one-to-one -one learning environment at Lincoln High School in River Cities, the district needs better options to house online curriculum. So they had looked at uh, Schoolology, Moodle, and Canvas. Uh, the district is currently pilot, pilot, piloting the Canvas system and has received many positive reviews from staff, students, and administration. Uh, it was also noted that the UW, UW system just uh, re-upped with a six or seven year contract and they also use Canvas in the UW system. So the committee recommends and I move that we adapt or accept the purchase of a three-year license from Canvas Learning Management Systems for infrastructure at a total cost of $46,780. This will be paid in three annual installments and described as described in the contract with funding that will be coming from the district technology and curriculum budgets. Then the second item we have is Chromebook cases. Again, due, due to the one-to-one Environment, learning environment that we're going to be going to in the 2019-20 school years, uh, it was determined that we should have some cases to protect these devices which will be going home. And it kind of acts like a cell phone case. It's kind of like an outer case type of thing. It's a hard case of which uh, uh, it protects the unit. So if it was dropped or, or anything like that, uh, you, it has protection. So the committee recommends and I move that we accept the proposed, proposed purchase of 1500 bump harder Slim B armor CB slim hard shell cases at a total cost of $28,314.31. This will be funded from the 2019 20 district technology budget and the last of the district technology referendum budget for approval. Uh, the next item is the Lincoln High School Trade Home Selection. Uh, 
committee recommends and I move that we accept uh, the proposed house for Kim, Kurt and Kim Hoyer for a recommendation for a 2019-20 Lincoln Trade Homes project. And then the last item we have is a Ford passenger uh, van purchase. Uh, this, this van is going to be it's purchased on the state contract. Uh, the reason they're looking for the van is the district had an additional special needs van route uh, in 2019 to, facil to facilitate this addition. One of the special needs vans at Lincoln High School was shifted to the route. The 2006 Chrysler van used as a backup special needs van then shifted to Lincoln High School to transport Lincoln High School special needs students to job sites. The 2006 van is in very poor condition and the administration recommends the purchase of the new special needs van for Lincoln High School. Uh, there was one bid, uh, again this is bid on the state contract and the bid we are accepting and uh, I move, the committee recommends and I move that we accept the bid from Scafidi Motors at a cost of $26,494.50 uh, for the four 10 passenger van. Well, second. Yep. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve BS1 through BS4. We have roll call, please, Ann. Mrs. Rion? Yes. Mrs. Hepp? Yes. Mr. Krings? Yes. Mrs. Lee? Yes. Mr. Benbo? Yes. Mrs. Medina? Yes. Okay. And then the balance of our report, we had updates uh, on the copy copy paper purchase, which uh, has been the lowest it's been uh, that I can think of since I've been on the board, uh, that we got this. Uh, it's uh, $25 in change per case. And we also had a report from about the Food Service Administration review. So Lizzie came in and gave us a report and she uh, was very happy with it in the fact that, oh, just here today, in the fact that we did well uh, and very little, um, basically minor things that were, were, were had to be taken care of. But basically, they were all correctable fairly easily, and there was no major violations to deal with. There's also some very nice comments uh, from the reviewer for Lizzie and her staff, so well done. The auditors mentioned in our exit interview that this was one of the best uh, audit processes they've been through with respect to Lizzie's work, in addition to our food services staff. So I think it's worth absolutely doing that. What do you mean, one future agenda item, which I don't know if everybody heard of. Uh, the Trade Homes House Tour is scheduled for June 3rd, 2019 at 4 o'clock. So that would be our June committee night meeting, Monday night. Oh, June? Yeah, yeah June 3rd. That's when the tour is on the, the Thomas House project that they're doing this year. We're hoping all the snow's gone by then. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I submit the balance of our meeting minutes for approval. Second. Second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes of the Business Service Committee of April 1st, 2019. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and comments are approved. Thank you for the report, John. We'll move on to personnel. Uh, personnel services met April 1st at 6 p.m. We had no public comment at that meeting. Uh, we, uh, we made some accommodations for a presenter for a specific item and moved that ahead of the agenda. Though. And that was um, the project search custodian helper position. Um, we, we, we support project search and um, I want to make sure I get all this. We are going to be literally hiring a project search graduate in our program. It's going to be, there's the qualifications that have been enumerated, the essential function, functions that they need to be able to do, the physical demands and the hours. I think it's interesting, the school day hours are going to be from 4 to 8, and the summer hours will be from 8 to noon. There will be a 10-week externship, right? That's the word, where it's no pay, and then after that they'll become uh, a paid position. But I think this is fantastic that they offer this position to one of our search graduates. So that was notion number one. The committee recommends and I move to approve the project search custodian helper position. 
Two, the committee recommends and I move to approve the three professional staff appointments for the 2019-2020 school year. Three, the committee recommends and I move to approve the two support staff appointments. Four, the committee recommends and I move to approve the two support staff resignations. Five, the committee recommends and I move to approve the one support staff early retirement. Six, uh, the committee recommends and I move to approve board policy 447.11, use of seclusion and physical restraint with students. And this is for second reading. We've gone through this. It's that brand new policy that's two plus pages long. Um, number seven, the committee recommends and I move to approve board policy 447.11, exhibit form for notification and reporting of physical restraint and or exclusion, also for second reading. Number eight, the committee recommends and I move to approve board policy 447.1, physical force and corporal punishment for second reading. And basically all we did was that was member the number six had, it was hard to read and we made six and then under it A and B. That was pretty much the problem there. Um, so with that, I'll second those. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve PS1 for PS8. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? And then Brian Oswald uh, shared with us the recent hiring. Um, we just know that we are very quickly or very shortly going to have an associate principal at Lincoln High School, an associate principal at Rams. Uh, currently we're going to have a curriculum director and we're going to have somebody in our pupil services. But beyond that, I don't know if we have many more positions to fill because I know they've been added. All right, so I'll be bringing a couple more. Yeah, we have an addition to that. We uh, conducted speech and language interviews and seven applicants um, for that position that they interviewed on Friday. We have a couple offers out right now that we're waiting to hear back on. So that's our current status right now. Okay, thank you. So with that, I move that the minutes from April, oh, we adjourned at 6.18. And with that, I move that the, the minutes from the April 1st, uh, 2019 Personnel Services Committee meeting be approved as printed. I'll second that. And we have a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes of the Personnel Services Committee uh, April 1st, 2019. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Thank you, Sandy. Move on Ed Services. and. The Ed Services Committee also met on April 1st, and um, the meeting was called to order at 624, and there was no public comment. Uh, we had um, five consent agenda items. Does anyone want any of those held out? Okay. The first one was about Lincoln High School's Educational Alternative Program, or LEAP. 2.0. Ron Rasmussen, who is the principal of Lincoln High School, reviewed the progression of the LEAP program since it began in the 1970s. During the 2018-19 school year, the program expanded to include Lincoln Lodge, which provided support for ninth grade students uh, who were relocated to Lincoln High School because of the restructuring. After reflection on the success of Lincoln Lodge, and traditional LEAP programming, a committee was formed to consider improvements to the program. The results of that work are the recommendation for LEAP 2.0. Uh, we had a motion and a second to approve the implementation of LEAP 2.0 at Lincoln High School beginning with the 2019-20 school year. Our second consent agenda item was career and technical education or CTE curricula. Eric Seiler, CII subcommittee chairperson for career and technical education, along with Brian DeLaghi, instructional technology teacher, Kathy Jarosinski, health sciences teacher, and Ashley Tesmer, business and marketing teacher, shared and reviewed proposed curricula for their respective departments. Ms. Jarosinski also asked the committee to participate in the radial heart rate activity, an activity from which the health science, um, from one of the health science courses. And I was glad to know that Mary had the pulse. <laughs> and I watched the doctor the day after, and it was exactly the same. Really? Good for you. <laughs> okay, um, so we had a motion and a second to adopt the proposed business and marketing curriculum beginning with the 2019 20 school year to adopt the proposed information technology curriculum beginning with the 2019-20 school year. 
and to adapt proposed health sciences curriculum beginning with the 2019-20 school year. We went on to supplemental pay plan and Kathy Stebbin since our director of curriculum and instruction reviewed and explained changes to the supplemental pay plan. The QEC committee met and recommended adding a section explaining the compensation for course and workshop instructions, uh, which the instructors, and that part was uh, Roman numeral number two in um, the, the pay plan. We also had a motion and a second for that to recommend the changes to the supplemental pay plan set out in attachment F. Then we went on to start college now and early college credit program applications and Kathy Stebbins-Sins reviewed student request uh, for SCN and ECCP for the fall of 2019. We had one motion and a second to recommend approval of the 14 applications to participate in the nine requested courses at Mid-State Technical College through the uh, Start College Now program in the fall of 2019-20 school year. And we had a second motion uh, and second that was um, made and seconded to recommend approval of the one application to participate in the one requested course at UW Waukesha through the Early College Credit Program in the fall of two, uh, the 2019-20 school year. With that, I, uh, the committee recommends and I move adoption of ES1 through ES5. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve ES1 through ES5. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. We then went on to uh, updates, and Kathy Stebbin Hintz and Brian Oswald, uh, who is our Director of Human Resources, provided information on teacher absences and the reasons teachers are absent. A slideshow was shared showing in and out of school absence reasons, as well as the number of days by building teachers were absent. Uh, data was shared for the 2016-17, 2017-18, 2018-19 school years. And these absences were for committee um, meetings and um, <coughs> I guess professional development. Professional development, um, field trips, co coaching. So out of school reasons that weren't related to sick leave yeah. or, or personal days, that type of thing. Right. OK. And um, Mr. Byrne, our superintendent, also shared a handout regarding administrator absences. And with that, the committee recommends and I move um, adoption of the minutes for the April 1st Educational Services Committee meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes of the Educational Services Committee on April 1st, 2019. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ann. We'll move on to agenda referrals, information requests. Do have anything this month? Okay, legislative agenda. John, that's new. Well, April's been a little busy month this, uh, this with the spring election. Uh, we welcome Mary, Mary Rome back. Uh, we have to say goodbye to Ann Lee and thank her for her many years of service. And we welcome our new member, Troy Beard, in, who won in the election along with Mary. So he'll be joining us on the 22nd, I believe. Uh, then along with the, there was multiple referendums again. Um, Craig had provided in our background the, the Wheeler report of which basically told you what passed and failed. Uh, the, the, the nutshell is, is that 85% of the referendums passed uh, this past election. Uh, there were 26 referendum to issue debt. Uh, that 16 passed and 10 failed, so those are the ones that failed the most. There were seven referendums to exceed revenue cap on a recurring basis, uh, and that was for that, which is one of them. No, and this is non recurring. Non recurring. Yep. That means you're renewing it. Uh, recurring will be permanent. Got it. Yep. Um, six passed and one failed. And then there's 26, 26 referendums that exceed the revenue cap on a non recurring basis, of which 22 passed and four failed. Um, so still referendums are strong. Uh, Wasby was uh, again pleased with that. Um, the next thing I have is an update of what legislative agenda 
the advocacy and government relations services are going to go uh, or work on this on behalf of the school districts. Uh, their first one is local school board authority, which includes the local control of district referenda and opposing unfunded state mandates. Number two is necessary resources for public schooling, including uh, predictable increases for available school district revenues to at least match inflationary increases in school costs, providing annual adjustments to per pupil resources linked to inflation, supporting increasing special education categorical aid to reimburse to at least 33% of the prior year eligible costs. Uh, if you remember at one time, it, or when it first uh, started, uh, there was supporting 66%. Actually, no, they were doing 80% of the, the special education. It went down to 66, and now it's less than 30. And then supporting recommendations to the Blue Ribbon Commission on School Funding that align with Philosophy resolutions. Uh, number three is student mental health and school safety, which includes supporting efforts and funding to permit schools to provide school-based mental health programs and address mental health professional shortages. Number four, implementing recommendations in the No Time to Lose report issued by the National Conference of State Legislators in connection to the Blue Ribbon Commission. And that is it on that. And then the other thing that just came out, and I just saw it on here, and Craig so generously printed it off. It was 36 pages, and I wasn't going to print it off on my time. Um, is the uh, Wisconsin, it's a, the state budget provisions, and uh, it's broken down by the issue and then it has EPI budget proposal, what the governor proposes, and then WASB's position on that. Interestingly enough, it doesn't have what legislature is thinking. And they don't have that yet. So, um, the other uh, thing is the, uh, there's a chance to justify, testify at the Joint Finance Commission Committee budget hearings, and of course, not one in central Wisconsin. April 5th is passed. The next one is Wednesday, April 10th at Oak Creek. There's one Monday, April 15th at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. And then there's one Wednesday, April 24th at the University of Green Bay. Um, so if you're interested in, in testifying at the Joint Finance Committee, uh, those are your chances. And then there's tips on there of what you need to do and how you only get about three minutes to talk. If you are interested in doing that, that's on the WASB side. And I have not heard much, or we have not heard much from the legislature at all as far as the budget. I think we're still trying to figure out what they want to do. Well, thank you for the report. Let's so we'll move on to the bills. Okay, I would make a motion that the receipts be noted and the bills be paid as printed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to that the receipts be noted and bills paid as printed. We have roll call, please. Mr. Crane? Yes. Mrs. Medina? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Lee? Yes. Mr. Benmo? Yes. Mrs. Hepp? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Moving to new business, uh, possible action on employee appointments, resignations, or retirement requests. We should have a sheet in front of you with two names on it. Lauren Conan, who will be teaching family and consumer science at Rams next year. And also Rachel Perez Kilo, who will be a special education teacher at Rams next year. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the two professional staff appointments for the 2019-2020 school years as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the two professional staff appointments as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Yes, I'd just like to take a moment to thank Ann for service over the last years. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with you and the shining star of this board for the staff, for students, and for taxpayers. So your contributions will be greatly missed. So thank you, Ann. Looks like we have some people in the back that came in. Yes. All my family's here. here. Sign. Hold your sign up. Here, 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 turn around. Hold your sign up so everybody can see. Thank you, Grammy. <laughs> so I guess with that, uh, we have a closed session meeting after this. Um, we also have a reorganization meeting on April 22nd, and that takes us out into May. So with that, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.